Hello lovely people, I'm Stella from Stella's Yarn Universe. In this video, I show you how to crochet a little squirrel. Actually, in this particular video, we only crochet the head, so this is part one of the tutorial. The reason for me dividing um, my tutorial into three parts is that um, I don't have Wi-Fi yet and it takes ages to upload even just a 20 minute video that <laughs> I shared last weekend. So I thought better to divide it into three parts and if, yeah, thank you so much for your patience with that. I'll share part two in which we'll crochet the body tomorrow and part three for the tail after tomorrow because it really it takes almost a full day to upload a 20 minute video so that's that's the way I have to go about it now but anyway I still want to share my patterns with you so we'll go with it and hopefully the wife will be good enough so that I can share full videos again this is the only downside of um moving to the countryside but honestly everything else is just wonderful and beautiful and magical and I'm so happy about it so I can definitely live with that. So we're making a gray squirrel because I guess that most of you will be familiar with the gray squirrels and we we mainly have my gray squirrels here in the UK but there are still some red ones um, it's like the gray ones invaded and um, unfortunately that made the red ones disappear everywhere in Europe um, where I grew up there are um, there are just red squirrels <laughs> and here they used to be but um, yeah thankfully they're coming back slowly slowly I think um, their numbers are increasing because there's a certain martin that um, the gray squirrels are not used to because they're from America and they don't know how to escape this um, martin which is um, sad but also good for the red squirrels so <laughs> anyway little side story we make a gray, uh, gray squirrel but you can also make a red one you can make the ears a little bit bushy in the end that's not a problem at all. Um, so use this tutorial for any squirrel you like. Or maybe maybe um, where you live they, they look different again. And just adjust the colors and color changes. And <laughs> make your very own squirrel. If you are a bit overwhelmed with all these color changes. Then um, feel free to just use one color. I promise you it will look just as cute. And whenever I make a color change, just make a regular single crochet and that's no problem at all. So without further ado, let's get started. For this little project, I'll be using DK or light worsted yarn. And the brands I'm using are Paintbox Yarns Cotton Decay and Rico Creative Rico Rumi Decay. Um, since most of you probably are familiar with the grey squirrels that um, we also have um, mainly here in the UK, I'm going for grey and natural white yarn. I wish I had a lighter grey but um, I don't unfortunately the lighter one that I have is too light so I'm going with this one and then I'll also be using this for part of the head but if you'd like to make a red squirrel I really recommend um, creative um, Rico creative Rico Romi decay in the shade Fox this is really nice for um, making any animals that have red in their fur or in their feathers. I use this for my little fox and for my robin, the chest of my little robin. 
so it's really useful um, I did uh, recommend this or I would definitely use this if I'd be making a red squirrel you may have seen that I've already started one in my last tutorial to show you how to embroider amigurumi eyes so when I finish it I'll show you how it looks completed so um, that's the yarn we need then we need a 2.5 millimeter hook and that's something in between a size B1 or C2 and American hook sizes um, in UK sizes it's in between a size 13 and 12 and yeah or just go for 2.5 millimeters if that's available where you are um, if you tend to crochet quite loosely I always recommend going for the smaller size which is a size B1 or 13 um, in the UK terms um, but otherwise you'll be fine with a C2 or size 12 then we need some fiber fill and we also need safety eyes now I can't decide which ones to go for I'll first I make the head and then I see maybe four millimeter maybe six I still don't have any five millimeter eyes I really should get my act together and order them because I use them for most of my projects so we'll see just go for whichever you like <laughs> you'll see later which ones I'm I'll be going for or um, maybe when I edit this video I will put it somewhere so you'll know which ones to order if you're especially ordering to, to make this project and then we need a yarn needle and I really like these with the bent tip they're so useful for sewing on body parts and then for the embroidery we'll need a pointy needle so a small embroidery needle or you could also use a large eyed sewing needle some black or brown embroidery floss scissors of course a stitch marker and if you have flat pliers I always recommend them for the embroidery part because sometimes the needles get stuck and these are so helpful for pulling out the needle so that's all we need and without further ado let's get crocheting as I mentioned earlier in this video we'll only crochet the head of the squirrel and I just found a really cute picture of a squirrel looking straight into the camera and I noticed that they actually do have quite a lot of white in their face at least the ones here and um, the ones that I found in the photos and especially this one which I think is a good representation of all squirrels so we'll actually start with white and then we'll also join this um, caramel color but in the beginning we'll start with white and we'll make a magic ring so just use your preferred magic ring method and now in round one we'll already use both colors so actually I could have done this before I just pull my loop out a bit to do it I'll prepare a little loop in the caramel color so that it's ready and we can join it in a bit. So this way is right, okay. So we start with three single crochet in the magic ring in white. One, two, three. And now in the fourth single crochet, we'll change to the caramel color. So we start the magic ring in white pick up the yarn and pull it out of the magic ring and now I just hold my index finger 
on the hook just to keep the, everything in place while I pull the loop on my hook and then I already hold the yarn in place the way I do when I use multiple colors to crochet. So the yarn that I'm going to crochet with goes on top and the other yarn that we'll crochet around goes underneath and the two are separated by um, the joint of my index finger. This usually works well for me, this method, but you may have your own method, I'm not sure. Let me know if you have any tips in the comments so that um, others may learn from them. That would be super helpful. So I always hold the yarn the way I always hold it with my pinky and ring finger. I just hold both of them at the same time. So now we pull this loop through the two white loops here. And I'll just keep this yarn in out of the way. So now we can continue with the caramel color. And we just crochet as usual in the magic ring, but we'll also crochet around this white yarn because this way we'll always have the other color that we don't currently use ready for when we want to change back and use it again. So I'll go through here through the magic ring and underneath the white pick up the caramel yarn, pull it through and then pick up the yarn again and pull it through the two loops. And that's the first single crochet in caramel done. Now we'll do the next one and with the next one we'll change right back to white. So we go through the magic ring, pick up the caramel, pull it through and then pick up the white and pull it through the two caramel loops on our hook. So now our round is complete and we're ready to start round two in white again. Now we just close the magic ring and I don't close it too tightly as usual. Now the colors get switched. And in round two, we uh, single crochet six again. So we start in white again. Excuse me while I just try to get the hook in. Uh, usually I help with my right index finger <laughs> to get the hook in. And now we go underneath the caramel yarn, pick up the white, pull it through, pull it through the loop. Pick up the white yarn, pull it through the two white loops and that's one single crochet. We'll do two more this way. Two. Here's the next one. Three. And with the fourth one, we'll change back to caramel. So we start the single crochet in white by pulling that out of the stitch. And then we pick up the caramel and pull it through the two white loops. Now we switch colors again, so caramel goes on top and we'll complete the round with two stitches, two single crochet in caramel and this time I don't change back to white in the second one, so just, oh, I have to crochet around the white, so the white yarn should always lay on top of the hook. That's one, and through the next one, that's two, and 
this is round two done. Just make sure that everything doesn't turn inside out, which can easily happen with such a small round. Now in round three, we start increasing. And so we increase in all six stitches. The first increase will be in two colors. So I single crochet the first in, in caramel, but I change to white. So I pick up caramel, pick up the white, pull it through the two caramel loops. And now in the same stitch, we are switching colors. So white goes on top. We'll make another single crochet so that we'll have an increase. So second one will be in white. And then one more decrease in the next stitch. One and two. And in the next one and two. Oops. And in the next increase, we change back to caramel. But first, the first one is going to be the first single crochet is just going to be white. And then in the same stitch, we make another single crochet in which we change back to caramel. Now we switch back colors. So that was number four, I believe. In the next round I should start using my stitch marker so I don't get confused. Um, yeah, this was the first increase, so yeah, we have two more, which we will make in caramel only. So two single crochet in here, and then two single crochet in here, and that's round three done. By the way, if you haven't close the magic ring completely yet, you can do so now. In round four, we'll increase further and also we'll join the gray yarn. So I'll prepare a little loop in gray. Do you have that ready to join here? And then we start with one single crochet and in the next stitch we increase and this increase again I do in two colors the first single crochet of the increase um, I will crochet half in caramel and half in white. So go through the stitch, pick up the caramel, pull it through and pick up the white and pull it through the two caramel loops. And then in the same stitch, white goes on top now, I make one single crochet in white. Then in the next single crochet, we simply single crochet one. And in the next one, we increase again. So two single crochet in here. In the next one, single crochet one. In the next one, we increase. So two single crochet in there. In the next one we single crochet one and in the next one we increase and we'll change to caramel in the second single crochet of the increase. So we 
single crochet one in there and one more changing to caramel so now we use single crochet one in the next stitch in caramel and in the first single crochet of the increase that we'll make in the next stitch we'll join the gray yarn so pick up the caramel yarn pull it through and then we pull the gray loop on our hook now when I work with three colors at the same time. I just treat the two colors that I'm currently not working with as one string and they go both underneath and the gray that I'm using now goes on top. So I'm pulling this loop through the two caramel loops and because this is an increase in the same stitch we'll make one more single crochet. This one completely in gray And then in the next stitch, we make one single crochet. Now in the last stitch, we make an increase in gray. So two single crochet in there. And that's round four done. So now I believe, let's double check, but I believe now we just have, yeah, we have three rounds in which we'll simply single crochet in all 18 stitches that we now have. And in the first one, we change back to caramel. So I start the single crochet in gray, and then I pick up the caramel yarn and pull it through the two gray loops. Now caramel goes on top and the two colors that I'm not using, they go underneath together. Now I single crochet one in caramel. And in the next single crochet, I change back to white. So we start with caramel and then we pick up the white and pull it through the two caramel loops then we'll have let me count one two three four five six seven eight single crochet in white one two three four Five, six, seven, and eight. And by the way, sometimes you can pull the yarn that you're crocheting into your stitches a little bit just to make sure that it doesn't pop out in between the stitches. Although I, I don't mind if it does a little, especially when crocheting animals that just makes it look more natural but um, yeah also don't pull too tight so that you don't um, you don't want to distort the shape of the of the amigurumi now in the next single crochet we change to to um, caramel so we start in white of caramel pull it through so now we have caramel on top and we single crochet in the next stitch in caramel and in the next stitch we do uh, we we change to gray so we pick up the caramel yarn pull it through and then we pick up gray and pull it through the two caramel loops and now gray goes on top 
and now we can crochet the remaining stitches of the round in gray. So that's two, three, and four. And that's round five done. Now in round six, we change back to caramel. So we pick up the gray yarn, pull it through, then pick up caramel and pull it through. And caramel goes on top now. And then we single crochet in the next two stitches. One, and two, and in the next single crochet we change it to white. So now white is on top. Now do we have eight again or less? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Now we single crochet in the next seven stitches in white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now in the next single crochet, we change to caramel. So we start in white, and then pick up caramel and pull it through the two white loops. Now caramel goes on top. You may want to sometimes detangle all your skeins. I'm not doing it for now, but um, yeah, I do it after the next round because then we we'll make the embroidery and attach the safety eyes. So now now I'll single crochet the next the next two I'd say in caramel. One and two. And in the next single crochet, we change it to gray. Then we single crochet the remaining three stitches in gray. And that's round six done. So now we'll start with the embroidery because that's easier to do without the safety eyes in the way. And so I'm using black embroidery floss, but I would use brown, I think, if I had brown. And I thread it on my pointy embroidery needle. And you can also use a large sewing needle for this. So now I'm embroidering like an epsilon shape and then I add the, a few, um, like probably only two stitches, one on each side for the mouth. And I start almost in the center of the magic ring, but um, with embroidery, it's better if you stitch through the fibers rather than through in between stitches, because this way you have way more control over where your stitch goes. So I'll go through here, so not exactly in the center of the magic ring, just so that I can really control the stitch. So as you can see, it doesn't move around or anything. It's it's in place now because I stitched through the fibers of the yarn. So now I want to create like a little epsilon shape. 
So I'll stitch like one round diagonally up toward the right. So where the stitch marker is, this is going to be the top of the head. But um, it may be a little bit different for you because, um, you know, everyone has different tension. But you can think of this gray part as the top of the head. So I stitch through somewhere here, but again, not in between stitches, but through the fibers and very carefully. So please don't hurt yourself. I'll keep my finger out of the way now. And if you have pliers, they come in handy here because they make it easier to pull the needle out. That's the first stitch done. Now I go through the same spot near the center of the magic ring to do the other side. And then again stitching diagonally upward about one round so I go I go through here trying to catch some of the fibers and that was easy <laughs> and now we have a little v-shape so now I go through the same spot again to do the mouth. So the nose is done, like we just leave it like that. Oops. So now I'm making a downward stitch also about one round long so that we have this epsilon shape that I was talking about. So I'll stitch through here to the inside of the head. And now to make the mouth, I'll make a little Stitch. Yeah, so I'll make two tiny stitches, one on each side, um, but not not completely horizontal. But I kind of follow the round line in between rounds. So I just go through here. Let's just see how that looks, or maybe a little bit further down can't get through there for some reason. <laughs> Let's stick to this spot and see how it looks. Okay, and then I think that will work. <laughs> so then I stitch through this bottom side of the epsilon. Yeah, I think that will look cute. Tiny little mouth. <laughs> so then I repeat this on the other side. So somewhere here, I think. See how that looks. Now I go again through the bottom side of the epsilon. And that's it. That's a little mouth done. So 
So nose and mouth embroidery is complete. So now we can tie the two ends together. You may have noticed I stitched the <laughs> working yarn ends. <laughs> I worked them into my embroidery. I didn't pay attention. I thought it was just the <laughs> loose yarn ends, but no. So I'm just repeating one of the stitches that I had to cut through. So just I'm making sure the working ends are out of the way. here I want this stitch to start so sometimes when you're not exactly in the right spot you can just correct it th this way by fr um, going exactly through where you just came where the, the embroidery floss came out and then stitching through to where you want the stitch to go actually so It only works if you stitch exactly through that spot. Okay, so now I can tie the ends together. <sighs> Just make a double knot. And this, I think I'll just hide in the head and use this filling. So now we can go ahead and place the safety eyes. And now we'll see which size. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Probably the, the big ones will be cuter, although they're a little bit extreme. Um, oh, but this is cute as well. Hmm. I wish I could ask you now, wish this were live and I could ask you because I'm not sure which ones to use. I guess I need to check the photo again. <laughs> okay, I think I know what to do. I'll go with the four millimeter. So I attach the safety eyes now and I just leave them like this. I know usually their eyes are in this circle, but I think it's really cute. So I'll keep it this way. So all these yarn ends go in here now. As filling, and then we can continue with crocheting the rest of the head. So, in the next round, which is, is it round seven? Let me double check. Yes, round seven, we'll start decreasing. So, we single crochet one. And then we decrease and at the same time we change to caramel. But don't worry, it's not as tricky as it sounds. So we go through the front loop of the next stitch, pull our hook down to go through the front loop of the next stitch. So now we have our loop on our hook and two front loops. Then from underneath these two, the white and caramel yarn, we pick up the gray yarn to pull it through the two front loops. 
And now we go over these two to pick up the gray yarn again. Oh no, now we pick up the caramel yarn because we're changing color and pull them through the two gray loops. And that's our first decrease done. Now caramel goes on top and we single crochet the next stitch in caramel. And then just need to pull a bit because the tension was off with this loop. And then we decrease one, changing to white. So this time we go through the front loop of the next stitch here. And the front loop of the next. From underneath these two, we pick up the caramel to pull it through the two front loops. Then we go over the two to pick up the caramel yarn and pull it. No, we're changing color. <laughs> Keep forgetting that. So white goes on top now. And we pull it through the two caramel loops. Now we single crochet in the next stitch. And decrease again, this time without changing color. And then we single crochet one. And now we decrease changing to caramel. So we go through the front loop of the next, the front loops of the next two stitches again, pick up the white yarn, pull it through the front loops, and then pick up the caramel yarn and pull it through the two white loops. And then we single crochet in the next. And decrease, changing to gray. So we pick up the caramel yarn, pull it through the two front loops, and then we pick up the gray yarn and pull it through the two caramel loops. And now the rest is all in gray. So we single crochet one. and decrease one. So, that's the round done. And now we need to fill our head with fiber fill because after the last round, oops, the head will be done and we won't be able to add any more fiber fill. So I just squish this in with the back of my hook. There we go. So that we can start our last round. And the last round I'll make completely in gray. And we, what we do is six, um, six decreases in a row. So for the first two decreases, I'll keep crocheting around these two, just to kind of weave them in, in a way. And then we can let them go. So that's decrease number one.
next one Decrease number two. Now I'm letting these two go. Cut them short already. Decrease number three. Decrease number four. Five. Just pushing the last bit of fiber fill in there. And maybe I can even squeeze in these yarn ends. I just use my carefully use my closed scissors for this because the opening is very small now. That's it, and now one decrease to go. And now our round has six stitches and the head is complete. Of course it still needs ears, but other than that it's done. So we can fasten off here and now we just need to close this little, little round. So we'll need our yarn needle for that. We're going to thread the yarn end on our yarn needle. And now we just go through the front loops of all of these six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we pull it tight. And now we go through the center of this last round here and we stitch through to the gray part so that we can then weave in this yarn end and again pull tightly just to even out this the back of the head here and then we just weave the yarn end in with a few stitches this is a, an opportunity to hide these little spots where the contrast color yarn is shining through if it bothers you. It doesn't really bother me but while I'm well I have to weave in the end I might, might might as well do it. Now I have some embroidery thread coming out there which I'll just cut off. Push back in. <laughs> So just a few more stitches, one here, and then maybe one back here. And then we can cut this yarn in short. And that's the head of our little squirrel done. So now we can make the ears. I'll be using caramel to make the ears, but you can use gray if you prefer, of course. And I just leave a long enough yarn end to begin with to sew the ears on. And that doesn't need to be very long because they're easily sewn on. Then I make a little loop. And then we can chain three, two, three, and then all we do is single crochet one in the second chain from our hook. 
and then single crochet one in the next chain and that's it you're done so we can fasten off here again leaving the yarn at long enough to sew the ear on which doesn't need to be very long at all pull that through and that's one little ear done and then we repeat this for the second ear so our little ears are done and now we're sewing them on the head for this it's helpful to use a little pin which I always forget to mention in the beginning <laughs> of the video um, let's see where this should go So with the pin, or if you have two pins for both ears, that would also be good because then you can pin them in place and experiment with it a little bit. I think that's a good place for the ear. I think they're quite far up on the head, so I hope that's enough, but I think I think it looks good. So I'll just start with one of the two yarn ends, thread it on my yarn needle, and then what I do is just um I stitch through to the back of the ear, then back forward through the ear. By the way, this is round one, two, three, four, five, six. Between round six and seven, I have the ears now. And I'll just make a little stitch back here. Don't need the pin anymore. And now I stitch back through forward through the ear and then again through the head close to where I stitched through last time right next to it and then again back forward through the ear close to where I stitched through last time and once more back through the head close to or at the same spot even because these are little ears we don't want them to be too broad and then I thread the second yarn end on my needle and this one I'll just stitch through somewhere here where I have the same color yarn and that's the ear attached now I just need to weave in those two yarn ends didn't weave in this one yet because first I wanted to make sure that I'm happy with the placement of the ears but I think that looks good so now I can go ahead and weave in both ends so I just make a few stitches on the part that has the same color yarn that's ear one done and now I need to repeat the same with the other ear
And that's the head of our little squirrel done. <laughs> so, thank you so much for crocheting along with me. Thank you for your patience with this three-part tutorial. We'll see how it goes. I hope that in future I can upload them as a whole again. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but until then, we'll go with it and just divide them in different parts. So in part two, we will crochet the body for our little squirrel. I'm very excited about that. So if you're watching this the day I share it, then see you tomorrow. If not, then um, you can just click right on it here and continue crocheting your little squirrel. Thank you so much. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and thanks for being here and happy crocheting. Bye.